Hello everyone. This is Dr. Priyanka Sachdev and I welcome you all in MadLife series of live webinars. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about a topic from systemic pharmacology that is the diuretics. Uh, I, I advise you before watching this lecture, just watch my previous lecture on my channel that is basics of diuretics. So you will have a better understanding in this lecture. Anyways, just give me a second so I can start it. Just start it. Uh, I'm going to cover a topic from systemic pharmacology that is loop diuretics. Uh, these are the other name of loop diuretics. Loop diuretics are also known as high ceiling diuretics, lasix, loop diuretics. These are one and the same thing. These are the synonyms of loop diuretics. In this lecture, I'm going to cover the drug that is loop diuretics in the following headings. First, I will enumerate the drugs which comes under this category. Then I will tell you why loop diuretics are known as loop diuretics, why they are known as high ceiling diuretics, what is the reason behind it. Then I will tell you the most important thing that, that is mechanism of action of loop diuretics. How do they act as a diuretic? Then I will tell you the pharmacokinetics of their prototype drug. Then I will tell you the uses and then the adverse effects and the interactions. Uh, any drug in pharmacology should be described in these headings only. Anyways, so just start it. Uh, first, I, will, I would like to enumerate the drugs which comes under this category that is loop diuretics. This is the overall classification of diuretics. There are three types of diuretics I have already told you in the last lecture. That is high ceiling diuretics, medium efficacy diuretics and weak diuretics. I won't... Uh, um, enumerate all of them now because I have already covered this topic in the last lecture, the classification of diuretics, that is basics of diuretics. And high ceiling diuretics contains three drugs, that is furosemide, bometanide, and torisamide. There are three drugs. Previously, there were two more drugs in this category, that is ethoprenic acid and organic mercurials, that is mercerite. But these two drugs are banned nowadays because of their severe autotoxicity as the adverse effect they cause. So they are not used nowadays because of the severe autotoxicity they cause. They are banned in most of the countries. So there are three drugs in this category that is loop diuretics, that is furosemide, bometanide, and torisamide. Furosemide is the prototype drug here. So these are the drugs. Now I will tell you the definition why loop diuretics are known as loop diuretics. Why they are known as high ceiling diuretics. These are the two synonyms. Uh, loop, they are known as loop diuretics. The reason is very simple because they act on loop of Henle in the nephron. The nephron have various parts that is glomerulus, PCT, loop of Henle, DCT and collecting tubules. So they act on loop of Henle. Loop of Henle are two limbs, descending limb that is thin, thin portion and ascending limb that is thick portion. So, so they act on ascending limb of loop of Henle. So that is their site of action. That's why they are known as loop diuretics. But why they are known as high ceiling diuretics? Do you know what is the meaning of ceiling? Ceiling means roof. A room has a floor and a roof. Roof is known as ceiling. High ceiling means roof is high. So what is the logic behind it? Why they are known as high ceiling diuretics? Now, for explaining this, I have to make a graph. To explain you this, if I make a graph between two things, that is the dose of the diuretics and their effect, that is diuresis. If I make a graph on x-axis, I have taken the dose, dose of the diuretic drug. Just suppose I'm taking furosemide, that is the dose of the furosemide. And on y-axis, I have taken their effect. They cause diuresis. Diuresis means increased volume of urine. So they are causing increased volume of urine. So that is diuresis, that is measured in ml or liters. Just suppose I am giving 10 milligram of furosemide to the patient. So patient is, patient is uh, excreting one liter of urine, that is diuresis. If I am increasing the dose to 20 milligram, two liter of urine is excreted by the patient. If I am uh, increasing the dose to 30 milligram, 40 milligram, 50 milligram likewise, so there is two liters, three liter, four liter, five liter of urine excreted by the patient. I mean to say, as I am going to increase the dose, the effect that is diuretic, diuresis goes on increasing. So the effect that is diuresis is directly proportional to the dose for a long time. After that, a point will come, you will increase the dose. That is after 50, 60, 70, 80, you will increase the dose, but diuresis will be constant. That is five liters only. That won't be increased beyond it. So now the effect become constant. So it is looking like it is it is becoming constant, but after a long time. So this is the, if I consider this is the roof, this is the floor. So roof is high. That's why they are known as high ceiling diuretics. That indicates that is 
the dose is directly proportional to diuresis for a long time after that it becomes constant so why they are known as high ceiling diuretics because on progressively increasing the dose there is increase increased diuresis after that it will become constant that the ceiling is high that's why they are known as high ceiling diuretics correct so this is the same graph i have already explained you on x axis i have taken dose on y axis i have taken diuresis and uh, on increasing the dose the diuresis goes on increasing 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 after a point it becomes constant that is ceiling is high so i have explained you the drugs the three drugs comes under this category furosemide torisamide and bumetanide i have told you the definition why they are known as loop diuretics because they act on loop of henle why they are known as high ceiling diuretics high ceiling diuretics because uh, the dose is directly proportional to diuresis and after a long time it becomes constant so ceiling is high that is that's why they are known as high ceiling diuretics now i'm coming on mechanism of action this is very very important please everyone concentrate here so mechanism of action uh first first of all i will i will uh, explain you the mechanism of action but tell me the site in the nephron where they act in the last lecture i have already described the uh, the various sites of the nephron at uh, which various diuretic acts so i have already told you the mnemonic also so this is the pct this is the descending limb of loop of henle this is the ascending limb of loop of henle this is dct and this is collecting tubule so there are five diuretics the mnemonic was c o l t p cold p so c that is carbonic anhydrase acts on pct o o means osmotic diuretics they act on descending limb of loop of henle basically l l is my topic today that is loop diuretics they act on ascending limb of loop of henle t means thiazide thiazide acts on dct and last is uh, potassium uh, potassium sparing diuretics p means potassium sparing diuretics so they acts on collecting tubules so that was my mnemonic co ltp and that was in sequence they were acting um, right now i am concerned with loop diuretics so loop diuretics acts on ascending limb of loop of henle correct so they are acting here in the ascending limb of loop of henle never forget so these are the loop diuretics they are acting on ascending limb of loop of henle so this is a simplified diagram of nephron uh, nephron uh, have glomerulus but no diuretics acts on glomerulus all the diuretics acts on the tubule that is either on pct descending limb loop of henle ascending limb of loop of henle dct and collecting tubules correct the all the tubules pct loop of henle dct and collecting tubules are lined by epithelial cells or tubular cells so these green colored cells i have shown in the diagram these are epithelial cells now look at the glomerulus actually this is bowman's capsule now a afferent arteriole comes inside it form a tuft of capillary and efferent arteriole exit from it afferent is coming inside afferent arteriole forming a tuft of capillary inside the bowman's capsule and efferent arteriole is going out of it so this efferent arteriole which is going out of the bowman space the, what what happens to this it will form a bunch of capillaries over these tubules that is pct loop of henle dct and collecting tubules this is known as peritubular capillaries or vasa recti so i mean to say they tightly cover all the tubules from all around so i mean to say this is the diagram uh, every cell the green colored cell shown in the diagram is a epithelial cell i have drawn only one cell but this is likewise throughout the tubules throughout the tubules there are tubular cells the green colored cell on one side can you see here uh, this is a green colored cell on one side of it there is there is lumen containing urine and the on other side of it there is blood capillary of the vasa recti containing blood so this is the basic funda that is there is a tubular cell on one side of it there is a lumen on other side of it there is a blood capillary containing blood so on one side there is urine and on other side there is blood on every uh, on uh, each epithelial cell throughout the tubules so there are two membranes can you see here this is the membrane surrounding the lumen so this is known as luminal membrane this membrane of the epithelial cell is known as luminal membrane and this membrane surrounds the is present around the blood capillary so this is known as basolateral membrane so there are two membranes luminal membrane and basolateral membrane luminal membrane is towards urine and basolateral membrane is towards blood capillary correct i am talking about this cell 
I have drawn only one cell, but it is throughout uh, the nephron in all the tubules. But I have drawn one cell in the ascending limb of loop of Henle because here I am concerned to explain you the mechanism of action of loop diuretics and loop diuretics acts on ascending limb of loop of Henle. So I have drawn a cell here. So on this cell, if I zoom out this, can you see this green colored cell? On one side, there is a lumen. On, on the other side, there is blood capillary. So if I zoom out this figure at that point, over the ascending limb of loop of Henle. So there is a cell here, epithelial cell. On one side, there is lumen. On other side, there is blood capillary. Now, just understand what happens normally. I will come on the mechanism of action of furosemide later on. But what happens normally? Normally, normally there is a pump here. There is a pump here, which is known as sodium potassium 2-chloride co-transporter. A pump or a co-transporter is there, which which takes sodium, potassium, and two chloride ions from the lumen. This pump is present on the luminal membrane, not on the basolateral membrane. So this pump takes all these three ions from the urine and takes inside the cell. So all these three, three ions, that is sodium one positive, potassium one positive, and chloride negative, two chloride ions. These three will reach into the cell. They are present inside the cytoplasm of the cell. And this pump have taken them from the lumen, and taken them inside the cell. Now inside the cell, what is happening? Uh, there are three ions, sodium, potassium, and chloride. Chloride will leave into the blood through chloride channels. Chloride channels are present on the basolateral membrane. So chloride will uh, 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 leave the cell and will enter into the blood. So chloride finally entered the blood through chloride channels. What happens to sodium? Sodium will also enter into the blood through sodium potassium exchanger. Sodium will go inside the blood. From, from the blood, one ion of potassium comes inside uh, the cell. So in the cell, potassium is coming from two sides. Potassium is coming from the luminal membrane also. And potassium is coming from basolateral membrane also. So potassium channels are present on both the membranes. Here also potassium channels are present. Potassium will leave inside the blood. Here also potassium channels are present. Potassium will leave inside the filtrate also. So inside the cell, no ion is remaining. Ultimately, no ion is remaining. Sodium, potassium, two chloride were entering. Chloride enters the blood. Sodium also enters the blood. And potassium enters both ways. In the blood also, in the filtrate also. So this happens normally. But what happens now? If there is a patient in front of me, the patient is complaining of edema anywhere in the body. The patient is having severe edema. And I am a physician. I want to treat the patient. I will give him or her um, furosemide. Just suppose, suppose IV furosemide or a tablet of furosemide, oral furosemide. If I give IV furosemide, the furosemide will reach directly into the blood. If I give oral, a tablet of furosemide, it will go in the stomach and intestine, get absorbed and it will go in the blood. So I'm giving furosemide in the blood, whether orally or IM or IV. So just suppose this is the furosemide in the blood I have given. This is the molecule of furosemide. So furosemide acts not acts from the basolateral membrane. It can only act from the luminal membrane. So furosemide have to traverse the cell and reach into the lumen before acting. So furosemide will traverse the cell and reach into the lumen. From this side it will act. Furosemide will act from the luminal side, not from the blood side, blood capillary side. So for traveling inside the cell, furosemide needs a transporter. So furosemide uses the transporter of uric acid. Normally uric acid uses this transporter to travel from the blood into the lumen and get excreted into, into the urine. But temporarily that transporter of the uric acid is used by the furosemide to traverse the cell inside and reach the luminal side. On reaching the luminal side, furosemide will block sodium potassium to chloride channel. So what will happen? Neither the sodium, nor the potassium, nor the chloride will enter inside the cell and inside the blood. They will remain in lumen only. So sodium, potassium and chloride will remain in lumen only. Now there is a golden rule. Water follows the sodium. Water follows the sodium. Wherever sodium goes, water also goes with it. So water will also excrete it in the urine. It will also not absorb. Sodium, potassium, chloride, water... And this pump also absorbs calcium and magnesium. Calcium and mag a small amount of calcium and magnesium into the blood that will also not be absorbed. So all these ions will be excreted in the urine. So that is diuresis occurs. What was the definition of diuresis? Any drug which causes excretion of sodium and water in urine. 
although it is causing excretion of sodium water but along with it is also causing excretion of potassium chloride calcium magnesium but these are the side effects main effect is excretion of sodium and water and all these extra ions which are excreted in urine that will be the side effect of urine correct so that is the mechanism of action this is the standard uh, diagram from the book the same diagram i have explained you this yellow colored cell is the epithelial cell so this is the luminal side that is this is lumen containing urine and this is blood capillary on this side so on one side there is lumen on other side there is blood capillary on the luminal side there is a pump sodium potassium two chloride normally sodium potassium and two chloride are entering into the cell on entering inside chloride is leaving into the blood through chloride channel sodium is leaving into the blood through sodium potassium exchanger and potassium is leaving by way into the blood also into the filtrate also correct but furosemide furosemide is blocking this so sodium potassium chloride along with sodium there is water and calcium and magnesium all these five ions will remain in the lumen only they won't enter into the epithelial cell they won't enter into the blood they will remain in the lumen only and they are excreted in urine and diuretic sacs correct so this is happening here 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 this is the luminal membrane here is the pump present this pump is blocked i'm marking it for you this pump is blocked by so uh, furosemide so sodium potassium chloride calcium magnesium water all these ions will remain in the lumen they are not absorbed inside the blood and they are ultimately excreted in the urine so that was the mechanism of action and this is how you have to write in your exams what is the mechanism of action of loop diuretics loop diuretics first enter from the blood into the lumen through a transporter that transporter is the uric acid transporter they use correct Uh, if they use uric acid transporter so uric acid will remain in blood only normally uric acid uses its transporter and comes in the lumen and get excreted in the urine but when furosemide is present in the body that transporter is not used by uric acid because furosemide have more affinity for that transporter so furosemide will bind with that transporter and displaces uric acid into the blood so uric acid in the blood will be increase a patient will have gout gout as a side effect or hyperuricemia as a side effect of loop diuretic correct so normally they use as a transporter and come on this side on the luminal side on the luminal side they block sodium potassium two chloride co-transporter which is present on the luminal membrane not on basolateral membrane in the ascending limb of loop of henry correct so these ions are not absorbed they will remain in lumen only so they are uh, they are excreted in urine and that's how they cause diuresis so that was the mechanism of action so this is the thing shown here same thing Uh, so that was the mechanism of action. I have already told you the drugs. The three drugs comes in this category. What are the three drugs? Can anyone enumerate? Now the definition why they are known as high ceiling diuretics, why they are known as loop diuretics, then the mechanism of action. Now coming on the pharmacokinetics. Pharmacokinetics will be told only of the prototype drug. The prototype drug here is furosemide. So this is the pharmacokinetics in front of you. There is nothing to explain. You have to mug it up. So this is the bioavailability. This is the T half. This is the dose. so that was about pharmacokinetics now coming on the uses what are the uses of loop diuretics where they are used so the, there are six uses basically six uses of diuretics so this is a mnemonic uh, they are used for hypertension x stands for hypertension they are they are used for hypertension not in all they are not the first choice drug for uh, hypertension but they are used in resistant cases normally thiazides are used as a diuretic in hypertension not the loop diuretics e for edema any type of edema is cured by can be cured uh, can be treated by loop diuretics not cured if you want to cure the edema you have to find the cause but if you want to temporarily subside the edema then loop diuretics can be used e for edema h for hypertension e for edema for this a make a heart make a heart instead of this a and heart means Uh, congestive cardiac uh, congestive heart failure congestive cardiac failure in congestive heart failure also they are used m m for malignancy in some malignancies basically in some bone malignancies or metastatic bone malignancies there is hypercalcemia in the blood and they cause excretion of the calcium in the urine so that hypercalcemia of malignancy can be treated there are two t's first t is for toxication if a patient comes to me with intoxication if a patient have taken some poison i want to increase the blood flow so that poison can be excreted in the urine so i have to give the 
diuretic to the patient so that that poison that intoxication can be excreted in the urine by increased blood uh, urine flow and the second t is of transfusion blood transfusion if a severe anemic patient comes to me the hemoglobin is 3 or 4 i have to give the blood transfusion i have to give many blood transfusion if pat cell is not available to me i have to give whole blood if i have given many whole bloods uh, together just suppose i have give, given three four units together then patient can have volume overload to prevent that volume overload uh, we can give along with the blood transfusion we can give diuretic so there are six uses so one by one we will go through it hai na what what are the what are these six uses h e a m t t hypertension edema congestive heart failure malignancy hypercalcemia of malignancy intoxication chemical intoxication and transfusion blood transfusion so there are the six uses one by one we will take it hypertension uh, how hypertension is cured by loop diuresis what does loop diuresis do they cause diuresis in diuresis uh, the extra cellular fluid is excreted in urine so extra cellular fluid volume will be decreased so venous return will be decreased what is the formula of blood pressure blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance we already know it so if we want to decrease blood pressure either we have to decrease cardiac output or we have to decrease peripheral resistance or we have to decrease both of them so how does loop diuretics do here loop diuresis causes increased volume of urine so if they increase the volume of urine venous return will be decreased venous return will be decreased so cardiac output will be decreased if cardiac output will be decreased bp will be decreased that is that's how they act as a anti hypertensive drug they don't have any effect on peripheral resistance but they don't uh, causes vasodilatation they don't decrease peripheral resistance they only decrease cardiac output so they decreases cardiac output that's how they that's how they decreases blood pressure so that was about but they are not the first choice drug for hypertension first line drugs they are not first line drugs hydrides are the first line drugs but furosemide uh, are used only in resistant cases second is edema edema they are used in all type of edema irrespective of the etiology of, of edema they can be given in any edema whether the edema is cardiac hepatic renal they can be given and especially they are useful in acute pulmonary edema and cerebral edema so that's how the, in the edema how they are useful Uh, what is edema edema is the collection of fluid in extra cellular spaces and that fluid is excreted will be excreted in urine with the help of diuretics so edema will be subsided correct but it won't be cured if you want to cure you have to find find out the cause whether the edema is cardiac or hepatic or renal whatever uh, the third uses uh, uh, congestive heart failure in congestive heart failure we have to decrease preload as well as afterload preload is venous return so they they decreases the venous return so they decrease the preload but somehow uh, they also de causes uh, mild uh, vasodilatation so they also decreases afterload but not much so basically they decreases preload that's how they are useful in congestive heart failure hypercalcemia of malignancy i have already told you along with sodium potassium calcium this transporter also transmit magnesium and calcium from the urine into the blood but furosemide blocks this so sodium potassium calcium magnesium none of them will traverse through the cell into the blood so calcium will be excreted in urine so if the patient have hypercalcemia so that hypercalcemia will be cured with furosemide chemical intoxication we can understand if a patient have ingested some kind of poison if i want to increase the urine flow of the patient so, so that the poison can be excreted in urine so furosemide can be given any loop diuretic can be given and in blood transfusion in severe anemia if i if i have given many whole blood not the packed blood and packed blood is not available to me so if i have given whole blood four or five whole blood in one day to the patient to treat the severe anemia so patient will have vascular overload to prevent it i will give uh, i will give a loop diuretic to the patient so these are the uses never forget hypertension e for edema this is congestive heart failure malignancy hypercalcemia intoxication and blood transfusion so hea and tt is a mnemonic now coming on the last that is adverse effects what are the adverse effects of loop diuretics so total there are 11 adverse effects out of these 11 there are five hypo these are five hypo some things are decreased in blood their levels are decreased that is hypo there are three hyper 
some some uh, molecules are increased in blood that is hyper their level will be increased and there are three more side effects so total there are 11 so hypo is first is hypokalemia that is potassium is decreased then hypomagnesemia magnesium in the blood is also decreased potassium in the blood is decreased magnesium in the blood is decreased and then hyponatremia sodium in the blood is also decreased then dehydration dehydration is water that is h2o h2o in the blood is also decreased and hypocalcemia that is calcium in the blood is also decreased so p m n h c these five ions are decreased in blood potassium magnesium sodium water and calcium all these are hypo in the blood what are the hyper there are three things which are increased in the blood that is glycemia glucose glucose in the blood is increased lipidemia lipid in the blood is also increased and uricemia uric acid in the blood is increased so there are three things in the blood which are increased by loop diuretics that is glucose lipid and uric acid because of hyperuricemia patient is having gout i have already explained the mechanism and there are three more uh, side effects that is they are not safe in pregnancy they can't be given in pregnancy because they are teratogenic they cause hypersensitivity or allergy sulfonamide hypersensitivity and there is autotoxicity in very high doses they cause severe autotoxicity that is hearing loss in the patient so these are the 11 side effects most of the causes of most of the side effects you already know i will explain you these first i will explain the reasons for hypo why these are five hypo are there you already know this pump is blocked by furosemide by loop diuretics what does this pump transmit from urine into the blood sodium potassium calcium uh, sodium potassium chloride calcium and magnesium and along with it water also so all these ions will be excreted in urine they are not absorbed in blood so their level in the blood will be decreased that's why there is hypokalemia hypomagnesemia hyponatremia dehydration and calcium is also decreased so this is the reason because that pump is blocked so uh, that's how uh, we want diuresis in the patient but if severe diuresis occurs patient will go in dehydration so dehydration can be a side effect diuresis is a use but severe diuresis causes dehydration correct and i will explain you the reason for hyper uh, potassium in the body is decreased correct we have already seen the level of potassium in the blood is decreased now human body have pancreas pancreas is a gland this is the human body this is the pancreas here suppose pancreas secrete insulin in the blood and this insulin causes decreased level of glucose we already know it decreases the level of glucose but for secretion of insulin in blood it needs potassium now diuretics causes decreased potassium in the blood so insulin is uh, insulin is secreted in decreased amount insulin is secreted in the blood in decreased amount so that's why there is hyperglycemia glucose level will increase so this is the reason for glucose level increase subsequently lipid also increases patient will be prone for diabetes and why uric acid is uh, increased i have already told you furosemide is in blood for coming in the lumen side luminal side it uses a transporter and that transporter is of uric acid transporter it displaces that transporter uh displaces uric acid from the trans transporter and temporarily use it because it has more affinity for that transporter so uric acid will remain in blood only it won't uh, come in the urine so that there, there will be hyperuricemia or gout so this is the reason for all of them so these are the adverse effects so that was the mnemonic of adverse effect hypo is p m n h c and hyper is glu g l u you already know what does it mean so that was all about the loop diuretics the drugs there are three drugs furosemide bumetanide and torisemide definition why they are known as loop diuretics you know because they act on loop of henle why they are known as high ceiling diuretic you already know mechanism of action in one line in one statement if i had to say the mechanism of action that is loop diuretics block sodium potassium 2 chloride co transporter present on the luminal membrane of ascending limb of loop of henle that is the mechanism of action pharmacokinetics you already know uses there are six uses h e a m p t you know the full form of these and adverse effect for hypo there is p m n h 
three that is potassium magnesium sodium water and calcium for hyper there is glue glucose lipid and uric acid and apart from it there is autotoxicity teratogenicity and hypersensitivity so there are 11 adverse effects so that is how i completed this topic so just a second give me a second so hope you enjoyed the topic you learned it and if you have any doubt in this topic uh, just write in the comment section and if you want some further videos on any tough topic you can write in the comment section and just just uh, subscribe my channel for uh, further notification thank you bye bye see you again